How are you today? Good morning. Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? I am great. Wonderful. Um, today we want to talk about attachment. So, Ooh. what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say that? Uh, attachment. Probably suffering. So it makes you think of impermanence. It makes me think of relationships. As William Blake says, kiss the joy as it flies and live in eternity's sunrise. <laughs> A safety net, so things that make me feel secure, like comfort or like having a nice compostable toilet to use. Um. I kind of think of material things and almost like putting worth onto things that you have. Um, yeah, I definitely think of people most. Um, people who make us feel um, safe or loved so attachment to that feeling of belonging and love uh, and then attachment to kind of uh, things that make us feel healthy in a broader term so like surrounding yourself by certain things and trying to maybe change the world around you so that it uh, feels most healthy it's a good i think it's a very healthy thing to have attachments because we 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 need to we have connect we have we have <laughs> sorry this is terrible um, do I really think let me just kind of think mm. take all the time about this because you can edit it all this out can't you so yeah it's an interesting question because Buddhism gives us the opportunity to for complete freedom from attachment and it suggests that anything that we cling to will be a source of, of suffering and yet as human beings we need to have our connection with one another with with our home with our family with friends and so inevitably there's going to be attachment there so it's more it's not that we can just start the spiritual life from a position of non-attachment. It's a process of, in a way, learning to love the nature of the mind, which does attach to things, to appreciate its nature and to soften and release around those attachments rather than just not just disconnecting. Buddhism is not about disconnecting. It's about having a very deep and full relationship with with life and with our friends and our family, but finding ways of cultivating love and generosity rather than wanting and manipulating and holding onto the situation in ways that inhibit growth, really. But how? <laughs> how, how, are we, how are we not attached? How do we arrive at non-attachment? Right. I have a pair of scissors, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Non attachments. I think um, when people talk about attachment, I often think modern Western people think, oh, yeah, it's about getting free of attachments. But I think most modern Westerners could do with learning to be attached, <laughs> yeah, to attach to things that are going to nourish them, attached to things that are going to um, help them grow. Uh, so you can be attached to things that are helpful to you and you can be attached to things. Often people are attached to the idea that they're not attached. <laughs> so you can be attached in ways that are helpful and ways that are unhelpful. It's a need, isn't it? It's, and it's often quite a grabby, desperate need. So, but then you need that, like you need some sense of healthy, safe, feelings of safety and belonging and attachment. So it's something I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Um, I think it's important not to be attached in relationships because uh, ultimately they all end. <laughs> I think that some of the most joyous relationships, at least in my life, um, happen when they're free of attachment and it's very easy come, easy go. My partner lives here as well. Um, so we're, we're both practicing uh, in the same way. And my last relationship was very codependent. 
uh, and I found that quite problematic. It caused a lot of issues. And then when we broke up, I was kind of hopeless. <laughs> I was a complete mess. And I sort of said to myself, oh, I never want to be in that place again where all my hopes and all my dreams and all my joys are in one person because it means that you're too dependent on that person being around and being in your life. And actually it started to strangle the relationship. Um, I think attachment can sometimes, you know, at first feels quite nice and quite intoxicating. Uh, and then it gets to a point where you realize because you're dependent, because you're, you're, you need them to be there, you actually can't let them live. It sort of strangles who they are as a person and your relationship. Um, so I've been working with my partner, my current partner, a lot about attachment and um, making sure that our friendships are thriving. I, I'm attached to our thoughts, Tim, and I think it's because now it's quite a comfortable place for me, quite a safe place. Uh, it's preventing me from maybe exploring further afield, trying places where there's maybe more risk and that I know I might not be welcome. So I know I'm welcome here. So that's a sense of attachment. Interesting. So let's talk a bit about Al Foxton. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a place that's always changing, always kind of, yeah. you know, moving. The environment is constantly being changed in some way or another. The people are constantly coming and going. Yes. How has this affected your relationship with attachment? Well, it, was, it, it is quite difficult. And I did feel quite burned out uh, after that two and a half years of doing it, uh, the constant changing, but that's my own limitations. I think that's quite joyful in a way because it's just new friends all the time, you know. One side is, I think it's really healthy to have people coming and going. You get loads of different new energies and you have that chance to look at your, my, I have a chance to look at my attachment and um, learn to let go of different people who come in and who I might learn to get attached to. But then I think there is another side that's a bit more unhealthy, which is because I know people are going and I'm going to have to let them go eventually. I sometimes don't get that. Uh, I don't invest anything in in those people, um, which is quite sad. But it's, off, it's, it's hard to find that it's hard to put energy, loads of energy into someone else and into a connection when you don't feel like it's going to carry on further. And if you feel like you have to let it go. And I think we only um, really grow when we're committed to something and we come up and we see where our ego boundaries are. Um, I think in community, I think it's very good in that there'll always be people that you find difficult. And they're the people that most contribute to us learning about ourselves and being a mirror to us, helping us seeing where we need to work on our on our, our woundings you know we only get triggered by people in the areas where we're wounded i think i just really like the people who come i mean a lot of them and sometimes you just feel an affinity almost from you know the, the first moment you feel a connection with somebody and it does in a way it doesn't matter that it ends because in a way, what you're relating to is something quite universal, which is meta, which is love. Um, and in terms of artwork, um, I work mainly on commission. So most of the artwork I do, I do either for our Foxton or for my commissions. So that before I start, I already have an inherent thing of they're going to be let go of, I'm going to give them away. I've been working with a guy who's 78 years old and I've been working with him for a few months, one-to-one. -one. And he's gone through so much growth through the sound healing and through taking time to think about himself and his life and his attachments to what he thought about his parents and his upbringing and his emotions and that sort of thing. He's really gone deep and detached from that, um, which has been absolutely amazing to kind of witness um if i got very attached to this figure uh which i suppose i am to some extent <laughs> but uh that would only uh bring me unhappiness if it got broken or destroyed or whatever but 
What's important is just the process of making it. If I enjoy that process, then even if it disappeared, I would have still been fulfilled in the process of making it. Wow, I think I do have quite a few pieces that I made for an art exhibition that I think I poured so much of my soul into because I didn't have to make them for anyone else. So they were made more for myself and I have them on my walls in my bedroom. <laughs> and they are for sale and I'm a bit afraid that one day someone is actually going to buy them and I'm going to have to let them go. <laughs> I think for me it's very much about the process of making them. I love the process, I'm fascinated by the process and then there are the art objects at the end and again I feel quite happy for them then to take on their own life wherever they go. I don't think there's any pieces that I wanted to keep back. In a way, my job is creating the artwork. After that, I have to let go of it. But yeah, you're right. It's scary to let go of all of that stuff. It is scary, but I think that fear is the reason to do it. You know, if, if there's no fear, I'm not being brave, am I? And uh, yeah, I think I really want to be brave about this. Yeah.